Welcome to a Big Hairy Dog webinar. This is uh, B9 Promotions. My name is Jeff. Um, we'll be rock walking through the B9 Promotions module. This is our agenda over here. We're going to look at installation, uh, the promotions tool itself, and how to move it to remote stores. Okay. Um, installation. So first off, this tool, although it installs with Retail Pro, is not turned on or active when you install Retail Pro. So I'm going to browse to my C drive, and then I'm going to go to Retail Pro 9. Um, I have a little virtual machine here, and it's just thrown on the C drive. And so inside Retail Pro 9, we have a R Pro Prom folder. So inside the R Pro Prom folder, there are two files. There's a DLL, a dynamic linked library, and an MNF. I have no idea what that file stands for. Uh, these two files are the plugin files. So in order to activate this thing, you have to first copy these and then put them in the plugins folder. So you have to copy them in the R Pro Prom folder and paste them into here. Now, I already got mine in there, so I'm just going to skip this. You can see both of mine are in here already. So I was ahead of the game. I already got them copied in there. So first off, you have to copy them into this folder. That just makes it so that Retail Pro can load this plugin. So if you have Retail Pro open like I have, and you copy them in there, you better get out of Retail Pro and reopen it. It loads plugins when you launch Retail Pro. That's how it works. So, uh, of course, I already had mine in there when I launched it, so we're in pretty good shape. Um, all right, back to R Pro Prom. In here, we also have a R Pro Prom executable, which you could, you know, right click and drag over to your desktop and say create shortcut here. I already have a shortcut right there, so I won't be um, creating a shortcut today, but um, you absolutely can create a shortcut directly to this and save yourself the hassle of having to browse into the folder every time you want to get to it. Um, now, uh, real quick here, looking over my notes, uh, there is a, sometimes when you launch it, you get an error, and that's just because the, the default database isn't set up quite right, and they added um, a little command line parameter right here. So fix DB, actually it's fix DB, not DB, but, but fix database is what we're trying to do. So if we right click this and we say um, properties, if you add a space forward slash F-I-X, D as in David, D as in boy, fix DB, and then click apply, okay. Then if you run this, it just spins for a second and it goes away. Then you right click and you go back in and you get rid of this. All that does is it, it fixes the database. That's all it does. So apply, okay. Let's relaunch this. So if you get errors when you open the tool that say something to do with the discount codes aren't right or some other fields aren't aren't found, your database is screwed up. Just put it in the fixed DB, run that once, remove it and then you'll be able to open it up just fine. So we're gonna open it up now. And mine's kinda wide, but then I have a wide screen, so that's probably okay. So the first thing I'm gonna point out is that you gotta turn it on. So step one, you gotta have files in there. Step two, you gotta have a clean database. Step three, you gotta have it turned on. So if I go to options here, you better click off enable the R Pro promo plugin. If you don't enable it, you don't pass go or collect $200. That's it. So you have to enable it. And there are a lot of other preferences here we should look at real quick. Uh, show the discount deb debug level, uh, the debug level on startup. That's just um, that's just a little window that pops up. Uh, it's useful. Um, if you're having trouble getting the plugin to run, turn this on temporarily. Just set it to minimum or which either. Minimum is enough. 
it'll pop a little window up when you launch the application. And when you go into Retail Pro, it'll pop a little window up all the time saying that this application is running. Um, if the window doesn't pop up, that's a good sign that you, you didn't do something right. You, you missed copying a file. I know I copied the wrong file when I was setting up for this webinar, and I thought I had it all set up correctly, and it was not set up correctly. And uh, and um, so um, so I got it set up correctly by checking the files, and um, I had to go back and recopy the files, basically. All right, so anyway, uh, inventory field to, to store, store and quantity discount. If you're doing quantity discount weight, then you have to set up an inventory field. If you're, um, and, there, and there's some really excellent docs on this too. Um, there's a whole promotions well, that we, you can get from the Retail Pro website or we can send you if you want to contact any of our techs, we can log into the Retail Pro's website, copy the PDF and send it to you. Um, Customer field to use for customer list name. So the first promo we'll look at is the customer pricing, and uh, you have to you have to put in a, a name for the list, and you have to attach it to the customer database, and you have to say where you're going to put that name. Inventory fields to use for excluding items. Right. If you're going to exclude items, you've got to say what the value will be and what field it will be in to be excluded. Um, Right, item note five to store the promotions uh, data. That's fine. I mean, we have ten item notes, and we we rarely use more than one. So, item note five is probably fine. You can change that. Um, it is useful to know, though, that that it does write little bits of data about the promotion into a field. Item note five, if you choose it, and that they're in the um, reporting in the generic reports that include all the item note fields. You could you could build a report around that data. You know. Um, Receipt field to use for storing manual discount, POS flag three. So if you override it and you do a manual discount, where are you going to store that information? That's that's fine. There's other there's other POS flags, note fields as well. Um, note field is really big though and really useful. POS flags are shorter, and most people don't even use one or two of those, so three is probably fair game. Uh, price decimals too, probably. I mean, most of us use two for price, sometimes more on cost, but I do have a few clients that use more on price, but it's kind of weird. Um, ocean discount to original price or item price. This one's critically important. Um, if you're a, a discount-oriented uh, retailer, if you have a situation where when you customer buys something, it comes up and says, "Hey, you save 20% all the time." If your if your model is that you have a and then MSRP, a manufacturer, suggests a retail price, but you're always comparing your prices against to show the value of shopping at your store. Then there's these automatic discounts that are mm, kind of not really discounts because you're, you're selling it for your price every day. You're just comparing it to what the manufacturer suggested. Um, if you then use the original price, the MSRP, to base your discounts of, you may end up raising the price. If they already have a 20% discount and you're giving them another 10, you're going to go from 20% off to 10% off, if you see what I mean. So you have to say, bring it from the current item price, basically. So uh, most of us, if we're running regular Retail Pro and you don't have automatic discounts loaded, then these are the same. Original and, and item price are the same, and it doesn't matter. Now, this promotions module can be a little slow. This virtual machine is not amazingly fast. You'll see that in a minute. And, um, and this thing can slow it down a little bit. So um, so if you need to, you can disable automatic promotions calculations, and you can apply them uh, you know, when you click the tender button, for instance. And you can have that warn if they're not. Uh, you can have it ignore manual discount items. You can have it always validate entire subtotal. Um, need confirmation after plug-in memory promo update. Nice. I don't even know. I have not played with that one. I'm not going to use any of these. This thing is run, not running fast, but Retail Pro has gotten to be much, much faster than the early versions of 9 were painfully slow. I'll give you that. But the Retail Pro has done an excellent job of getting them up to speed and, and making it pretty reasonably fast. If you set it up correctly and you have the right hardware, you shouldn't really need all those. Um, so we're going to save those changes, although I don't think I changed anything. I'm going to click the big Retail Pro back button there and get back up to the main screen, and we can go play with some stuff.
Um, all right. <clears throat> I think what we should do next, real quick, is just take a look at a prom promo. I set up a BOGO, and uh, then we'll walk through the different promos. So we're going to go into Retail Pro. We're going to go to Receipts. And yes, I see it's not the most amazingly fast, but this is a virtual machine. It's a machine inside another machine that I load Windows and everything on. And of course, it's taking longer now that I'm on the webinar. It was actually moving pretty fast earlier. Um, we're going to click New. And I set up a BOGO on some items that I happen to know the item numbers for. And they're these, these nice. All right, so the little error message you saw popping up has to do with a different plugin altogether that was not popping up when I did my testing earlier. However, and maybe we can pull that out real fast too. However, I would point out that the promotions plugin is working perfectly. So I've set up a BOGO, buy one, get one half off. And you can see that in fact, I bought one and then I got one half off. So the, the promotions BOGO that I set up is working perfectly. Um, now I'm going to back out of here and we're going to close Retail Pro and we are going to pop into Retail Pro 9, Plugins, and I am going to delete a couple of files here. So this is the plugins folder, right? So if I delete a plugin, then I have to reload Retail Pro because had I not reloaded Retail Pro, those plugins would have already been loaded, and therefore they would they would be popping back up and bugging me. So anytime you redo your promotions, if you rebuild them and you're testing, you need to close Retail Pro, go build your promotions, close the plugin tool. Because the plugin tool holds the database open. You have to close the plugin tool. And then you have to go ahead and launch Retail Pro again. And it's, yes, I know it's a pain in the butt, but if you don't do it, you will not get the right results. You'll test and you'll go crazy because you won't be getting the things you're looking for. So. Okay, so now, now that the little thrift plugin that I had set up is not loading. Now, I don't know if you saw it, but right here kind of in the middle of the screen, the promo plugin pops up and evaluates that item real fast. So I'm going to type the other one in. Now I'm going to press enter. Watch this little window right in the center of that screen. There it is. Oh, this one takes longer because this one actually had to do the calculation. So that's the little slowdown that I referred to earlier. Now, if you, if you are on a network that's very slow, um, if you are on older hardware that's really slow, um, and that little window takes too long, you, you can disable it, like we saw in preferences, and you can just make it so that it all calculates on when you click tender, right? So that's just your basic BOGO right there. I'm going to go ahead and try. Uh, Okay, so I rang up another one, and I'm going to ring up another one. And these are all different item numbers. And there you go. Now, now I've, I've did two of them. I did not limit it. And we'll look at all that here in a minute. But I did not limit it. I let it go. If you buy one, you get one half off. If you buy another one, you get another one half off. That's my choice, right? Okay. So, um, Let's minimize this. Let's just get out of here. And let's move this out of the way. Let's pop back over here to the promotions module. Now, if you have a widescreen, I, I recommend you have a widescreen, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, so we'll go through these different uh, these different uh, promotions up here. I think we should probably start with the, the BOGO, because I already have one set up, and it's kind of nice to start there. So I, I just give it a name here you know, a BOGO and men's apparel pants, and that's what I built my BOGO on. Um, and then you've got a priority here, 
you have to say what the priority is. I only have one promotion set up, so it's number one. But uh, you could, and I don't recommend this, but you could build promotions on the same products from two different promotions, right? So you got to give it a priority. Uh, subsidiary, you just select subsidiary. Most of us only have one. Uh, if you have more than one and you want to apply more than one, then you have to select more than one. Store is pretty easy. Basically, they're all, in the beginning, they're all on this side here, kind of like that. And we just highlight them and move over to the selected stores box, whatever stores we want to be included in this promotion. Um, now, buy filter. This is enormously important. I cannot tell you how important these filters are. These filters are amazingly important. This, if there's any place that'll screw up, this is it right here. Okay, so I'm going to open the filter here. We can see that my filter is is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I just said the DCS code equals that. Boom, done. Now, if I wanted to, I could come down. Let's say add another one here. DCS. Boom, add. I could say contains. You know, app. You know, a, contains apparel. Um, I could try using wildcards. I could say, you know, question mark, question mark, question mark. Um, you know, question mark, question mark, question mark, where I could say things like that. Um, I have not had good luck with any of that, I'm going to tell you. Um, you can use contains or equals, but what I've found is that you really have to um, be very specific in here. And when you are very specific, you then have to test this promotion thoroughly in Retail Pro before you turn it on at point of sale. Absolutely need to be very specific in this filter. So if I was going to do like like this department here, men's apparel, pants, and then I was going to do another one, this apparel shorts, I would do it like this. I'd say say I would say equals that department or equals that department or equals that department. You get where I'm going here, right? Um, T, whatever. You, you get where I'm going. If I'm going to do more than one, I'm going to say equals this or equals this or equals this. I have had the best luck setting up my filters when I spell it out, all the way out, when I don't roll the dice on, it contains this little phrase or, you know, using trying to use wild cards. Don't take shortcuts here. This is not the place to take shortcuts. So I'm going to get rid of these because these these are just messing me up. I, I don't really want that. So that's my that's my criteria right there. And we're going to go ahead and click uh, uh, OK. Now you can select inventory items. You can build this item by item. Um, now we're going to recommend that. Uh, can work though. It's not that hard. Um, so then we go to buy quantity, buy one, get, and this is your get filter, right? So I could buy one pant, get one short half off. I could buy one T-shirt, get one polo shirt half off. I could, I could make this do whatever I wanted to do, right? Now I set it up straight up, buy a pair of pants, get another pair of pants half off. Okay, so we're going to say uh, cancel on that, get one, apply once is not checked. Type of discount is a percentage. It could be a price. It could be a dollar amount. I could say buy one, get get one for twenty-five dollars off. I could say buy one, get another one for ten bucks. But I decided to go with buy one, get a percentage off, and the amount is fifty. And we got a nice little start date, a little uh, end date over here. I, I set the dates out uh, like into the future here, just so we wouldn't have any problems. Now you notice that. If my screen was narrower, as many screens are, that we would be like having to squeeze these fields back down in order to make these fields over here wide enough to see what's in them. So if, if you have a wide screen, I whole totally recommend you, you set this up on a wide screen. Otherwise, you'll be playing a little bit of the, you know, leapfrog there, you know, getting one field open, close down, then leap over to another one and open it up. Um, anyway. Uh, very important switch for this one right here, apply to price, highest prices, lowest prices. Now, you know, if you're selling pants and 
and they decide to buy some underwear while they're there too, or some socks, and you set it to apply to the lowest prices, then it's gonna it's gonna charge them full price for both pairs of pants, and it's gonna take half off the socks. And if the customer's got half a brain, he's gonna say, "Well, cancel this transaction. I'm gonna buy this pair of pants and this this pair of pants together, and then just I'm gonna pay you, and then I'm." going to buy this pair of socks and this pair of socks together, and I'm going to pay you. So, depending on how you're setting this up and what you're applying the discounts to, obviously, I'm not applying it to socks, but you see where this one could get you in trouble. Um, so anyway, um, very important little setting, coupon. If you put a coupon in, a coupon code, then you have to put the coupon code into the receipt in order to activate the BOGO. Um, the coupon code could be anything, by the way, it could be any, any value you want to type in. So if you have a, a, a barcode that you published in the newspaper and you want to be able to scan that, then just scan it into here or type it into here and that'll work. Then you got your reason to use for the discount reason and buy reason. And uh, yeah, you, whether you, if you're using a subtotal on this, like like if you buy $500, then you can buy one and get one half off pants. But it's got to be only for purchases over $500. Then you'd check this here and then put the threshold in. But I'm, I'm not really doing that. So there's all the settings there for your basic BOGO. And we just saw this BOGO work. So we know this one works. All right. Um, save that. Let's back up and talk about the different promotions here. Uh, customer pricing is a a customer price list basically so um, with this um, right um, we'll call it VIP right and then you would go choose items and um, I have not set this up in a while. Um, uh, the, the goal being that you select some items and that you give them specific pricing. Um, right, so you select some items, you give them specific pricing, then you attach this here to the field that we denoted, which was info one by the way, in the customer database. And then these these items here would come up at that specific price for that customer. Now the advantage to this uh, is as we compare it to Retail Pro, I should say, um, Retail Pro has a feature for this, it's called price levels. But in a price level you have to put a price on everything. So if I've got ten thousand SKUs or 50,000 SKUs or 100,000 SKUs, I've got to go copy my entire price level over at full price, and then I've got to uh, discount a select number of items. This doesn't require that we copy the other items over. This just says, on an exception basis, these items here will get a special price. And all I do is I have to list the exception items. I don't have to mess with the other items. So this is less work in setting up. It's much more specific, a little more surgical in, in the way that it sets up, but that's it. I mean, you, you set up a list, you set up the prices, you give it a name, you give it a discount reason. Always a good idea. VIP. Hey, let's let's go with the uh, consistency there. Then you go out and you apply that that name to the field you specified, and then that customer gets those those prices on those items. That's it. All right, promos. Let's see if it'll let us play with promos. Now, I find promos to be a very useful tool. I do like this one. This one's very flexible. So let's just walk through. Uh, click insert here. We'll say promo one. Yeah. We'll say priority. I'll say two. Subsidiary. Some of these settings we've already seen, right? I'm not going to waste time going through them infinitely slowly if we already know them. 
discount includes. Okay, here we are back to filter, right? Again, critical, critical that you set this up correctly. Um, in many cases, if you can, and we can't right now, um, I would actually go out and copy the department, and then I would paste it in. So again, don't take shortcuts here. Um, start date, sure, fine, today. End date, just skip ahead a little bit, or have a real one. All right, amount, discount, type. Okay, so this is what I love about this one right here. We got percent, we got amount, we got price. So I could say take 20% off, uh, take take $2 off. I could say look, sell everything for this price here. Very nice, very flexible. So I'm going to say 50% um, combined with other discounts or not, right? Um, so I'm going to say no on that. And then price levels. Um, Obviously, you can just select all. If you only have a few price levels, you just want to select them. That's fine, too. This would apply to whatever price levels you want. I'm just going to go with one. That's my retail price. Um, filter uh, level is at the item or versus the document. Discount reason code. I'm just going to pick one. Sale. Schedule, so you can schedule this as to when it, it's going to start and end. So maybe this is only on on Tuesdays between uh, you know 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Maybe it's a lunchtime special. Shop on your lunch and get a smoking good deal. So, and then we have to pick, you know, where where it falls and all that stuff. So, uh, cancel again with coupon code. So we can set a coupon code up on this if we want to. I'm going to click save, and let's go ahead and back out of here. Let's go back to receipts for a second. I've mentioned the coupon code twice, and I have not followed up on it. So I think at this moment I should probably follow up on it and clarify that that other half the uh, retail pro side half. Um, I guess it's angry with me because I've been playing with the other tool and I haven't been playing with retail pro and now it's, it's an angry retail pro. All right, so um, let's so we have the ability to make this a little bigger. Let's just make this a little bigger. Let's right click, go into screen designer, uh, interface page designer, I should be more specific. Um, let's go and open up our fields button. And pop down here, I believe, cube C's coupons. There we go. We're going to left click and drag that over into the screen. And yes, boom, there it is. Okay, so when you design your screen, you know, you might have to, you know, put this field up into it. Uh, it's probably close enough for now. Right, so you have to scan those coupons into that field right there. Now, this is not a field, this is a table. There could be more than one coupon at a time. So if you set up coupons, you have to click down here and scan the coupons in or key them in, whichever, to get them to, to work. All right. Our promotions on here. All right, so quantity discount. This is really similar. We could go through all these fields. We have the same filters. We have the same kind of things. Um, the really cool thing about here, about this, um, about this particular promotion, is uh, that you can give it the final price. So, for instance, in Retail Pro, if I use the the R Pro promo quantity discount schedule that's built into Retail Pro. Um, I can say when the quantity gets to three, make the unit price 333. But what if I want to do three for 10? I can't make it go 333, 333, 334, right? I can say three for 999, but I can't say three for 10. And that's the difference really when this one here, when you set this one up, you can do, uh, you can do a, the end price and it'll back figure all that stuff for you.
Right, so again, you have to filter it, right? And we're not going to deal with that. A discount applies to, and again, a filter. Uh, quantity from to quantity. So we here we can say discount price. $10, allow it to combine or not, price level, same, these are all the same settings. Discount reason, schedule, coupon code, start and end date. Um, we're just going to cancel this. Um, but this is something you want to play with. Again, these, these things, when you set them up, they require testing. Test multiple scenarios. Make sure that they're working exactly right. And again, to test them, you have to close this tool. You have to close this thing completely and then open this fresh. You can't have this open in the background. It won't load the new plugins. It will not reload the, the database. Okay? So the database, just to remind everybody, the database is sitting in Retail Pro 9, R Pro Prom. There it is. That's the R Pro Prom MDB right there. Boom. That's that's the puppy. So uh in order to reload that, you have to reload Retail Pro. Period. No exceptions. Okay. Uh, pricing. This one I struggle with a little bit. Um, let's click Insert. We got a promo name. We got a priority. We got a subsidiary stores filter. Same, right? Same. We've seen this. Start date, end date, price. So this just makes me pick a price. So the other one, the promos. We'll do this. I could say that's going to be 50 bucks, and I can apply it to whatever price levels I want, discount, reason, schedule, and coupon. This one just seems to be um, like a special price on items only. So it's a lot less flexible than than the promos module. Um, you know, it could be used though if you're going to do pricing on special items and you want to separate it from the promos area. It's not a bad choice. Um, Right, uh, there's our BOGO, we already went through that. Uh, we do have the ability to import rules. Uh, when you're importing, yes, all right, it's, it's angry because I'm looking at a BOGO. But when you're importing, basically it's importing an MDB, right? So so if you have an MDB and you copy it from another location and you want to import it in, you can do that. Um, all right, so that is the basic um, promotions module. now. Let's talk about move list in case no one's ever used a move list. And I have definitely brought this point home. You have to restart Retail Pro in order to read the new modules, but we've already beat you up on that. Um, so we'll just wrap up here with the move list and make sure we understand what that is. So if you have a multi store environment, and those of you who don't have a multi store environment, feel free to, to close the, the session. We're just going to talk about multi store and moving the, the move list uh, or the MDB down to a remote store. Um, this is going to involve uh, ECM. So if you have multiple store, you know what ECM is, the Enterprise Communication Manager, and it is the polling piece, the piece that makes one store talk to another. So all I have is a little uh, uh, station file that I've set up for importing data, but that's the same as it would be for a store. You would have a station file for one, each and every store, all the way down the list. So you could have 10 of these, you could have hundreds, actually. Um, on the Right bottom right corner here. Let's, um, let's bring this down a little bit so we can kind of see a little better and not make all over the screen. So right here is the move list button in polling. So if I go into move list and I then click new, to create a new move list, your only choice, you click OK. It brings you to this nice little screen here. So we're going to add on the top, we're going to add a file. I could add a folder, but I'm going to add a file. And I am going to browse out of the ECM folder and down to Retail Pro 9 and into beautiful downtown R Pro Prom. And there is my MDB, right? All right. So uh, I then have to say where I'm going to put that on the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and cheat. I'm going to copy this. Now, at this point, I'm going to point out that BHD strongly recommends that we have standard paths. Now, we don't use a C drive. We use an R drive. We set up all of our computers to have an R drive. So, for instance, um, 
if we have two workstations in a store, we got workstation one, and it has a C and an R drive, and we have workstation two, and it has a C and a D drive, and we map this one over because we share that R drive. We map that one over as an R on workstation two. This is how we set it up, okay? We set up all of our installations to have a standard path of R colon backslash Retail Pro 9. And I can't really write in this application, but you get the idea, right? So that's our standard path all the time. Backslash executable folder, whatever. That's what we use everywhere across the board. Um, it's an excellent plan. I strongly recommend if you guys aren't doing that out there that you do that. The reason we don't use C is because we have another secret Heidi drive. We have a Q drive on there as well. And the Q drive contains a ghost image of the C drive. And yes, we can reinstall the C drive remotely. So uh, we partition it off. We keep our data in a protected partition. So even if the C drive goes south, our data is not going south with it. Anyway. Uh, Back here then, in my little move list, I've got C colon backslash, and I've, the, the, the remote was the same, great. If not, I could go in here and I could change that. I could make that an R, right? I could make it be whatever I want, but you're gonna have to know that. You're gonna have to know how you install the remotes and where you keep that, what your path is. And if you have more than one, you're gonna have to, you know, send it to these three stores this way and send it to those four stores that way, much better to have standard installation practices where you know that everybody uses the same drive. And then when you see a path that's other than the R colon backslash retail pro nine, you know that's probably part of your problem. Anyway, um, down here you have to choose which stores. So if I had more than one, I could just check off the ones that had this path. Um, or you just click select all or clear all. Um, and then when you've got that all lined up, you click generate move list, and it looks like that, boom. Now that's just sitting there waiting for the next polling cycle. When the next polling cycle comes around, this thing's gonna get picked up and sent out, and then this little line here, this thing waiting, is gonna go away, and it's gonna look like that again. No, No move list files. So once it executes, then boom, you're, you're blank again. You don't have anything. Now, I am going to point out that, that with this particular procedure, you could uh, not only move the database down, but you could absolutely take these files here. So I could take this file here, and I could move that. Copy, paste. I could move that to the plugins folder on the other end, couldn't I? So I could actually install the plugins from the main to the remote. I mean, so I do this one and I go down and I grab the other one and I make another, another, uh, right? So I grab the M and F here. I do the same thing here. Boom, copy, paste. And I could also send the MDB down at the same time to the R Pro Prom folder, couldn't I? So you could completely manage all this remotely. Now, screen design, that's totally different. That's a bit more of a challenge. And this webinar is really not meant to address screen designs. But I will point out that screen designs are not only just workstation specific, but they are user specific. So everybody's screen design is held in their own folder. So sending those down is a little more complicated. Um, you could do it. Uh, if you set your network up well, what you'd have is you would have, um, well, what we do now, unless you're running really old computers, we set up the master workstation slash server as, as it contains the R drive. And then we set up clients, and we load the executable across the network. We're not running local executables anymore. So the advantage of doing it this way is that if you then put the layout folder up here on the server, you can then just go in here, stop Retail Pro, 
rename, remove completely the layout folder. Then relaunch Retail Pro. When it relaunches, it'll look up here, it'll grab the layouts, and it'll bring them down here. Boom. And the same thing here. You, you just remove the layout folder. It has to go up and get the layouts and bring them back down here. And then as everybody, re as you go around the network, just closing Retail Pro, renaming your existing layout folder. Don't delete it. Rename it. Because if you screwed the new layouts up, you need to have the ability to roll back. Um, but as you close Retail Pro, rename the layout folder, and then relaunch Retail Pro, everybody gets the same layout, and it no loads new profiles for everybody. So that's as far deep as I can go into it, really, in a, in a webinar environment. Now, you could, certainly you could, uh, if you needed to, send a folder down to like a place where you choose to put it. Like I could have a, a staging area on my R drive where I put new layouts and then I dial in later and I move it down to the right spot and I hack into each of the workstations and, and get rid of their layouts. Maybe I do this before business hours when they're not open and they're not even in the store. You could easily do that. If you need to deploy that coupon box, you could do it. But uh, I would recommend if you're not totally comfortable with what I've just said, I mean like 120% comfortable, that you get with a BHD trainer and uh, you walk through it once uh, with a tech or a trainer. Moving layouts isn't that hard. Once you do it once, you'll be like, that's, that's easy. I don't know why I was so worried about it. But at first, it's a little weird to get your head around. So um, I do recommend that you get with somebody who's done it before. Uh, okay. We're just going to back out of there. Perfect. Good. And, uh, and that's how you move things around using a move list. A uh, very, very handy tool. Very super easy. It, w it does exist in 8 Series. And if you are in 8 Series and watching this, uh, you, you would definitely need to read the manual. It's not GUI. It's not graphic user interface like it is here in 9. It is old school um, uh, text files where you're typing in pass and the, the, um, the grammar and the, the format that you type the pass in is a little odd. So you definitely need to look at the polling manual and look up move list and you need to read it very carefully and you need to test it. So with that though, I'm going to say thank you for watching our webinar and hopefully it has uh, been helpful and everyone should have a good day and we will see you later on the Big Dairy Dog webinar train. Thank you.